Mentor Hours is creativity fluid, as she refers to herself, practicing different art forms, including poetry, visual art, writing uh, for activism, and an actor. And uh, Dina is passionate, she claims, in her love of music uh, and weaving music and poetry and performance together more recently. Uh, some of her po published pieces of poetry can be found on different websites um, that I can tell you about later. And she has also been invited more recently to be poet laureate of a, the School Street Sessions Poetry Advisory Committee in Boston. B oh, by the poet laureate Boston of Boston, Danielle Legois Georges. Uh, Dina practices are meditative and exploratory, and she said that she plans to continue uh, exploring the themes of hope, peace, and understanding <coughs> through her macro lens of looking at the world and sharing her art with others. And she has a very interesting uh, presentation of her visual art and her poetry to share a bit of her journey as an artist. So please welcome Dina Tavares. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you comfortable? Would you like some water? Sure. I'll bring that and just sneak it over here. That would be great. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> I'm so grateful to be here today, uh, waking up and smelling the poetry with you all. Um, I would like to thank Cheryl Peralt, first off, for hearing my voice, and secondly, for inviting me here to share it with you all. Um, I also have a deep appreciation for the amazing healing and creative work that she does on a regular basis. I think the world is definitely a better place because she's in it. Um, I would also like to thank Dan Tapan and Mike Tarosian and HCAM Studios for assisting and welcoming me, me here today. Um, I'm also honored to be sharing the stage with Louis Apollon. His music is definitely soul satisfying. I was able to see him perform once before in a Dedham Hoff Coffee House. Um, so, let's see, there we go. <laughs> I would like to start off by saying, I own nothing but myself. I am the CEO of my thoughts, my actions, my ideas, my voice. We are mere specks of dust spread far and wide across vast landscapes. Contained within us all are the minerals of our lands swept up in the wind from the toils of other hands. What we become is a result of every interaction we have ever had, every hardship, all of our joy wrapped up into one soul. I want to talk a bit about my journey, our journeys in life, every moment that has ever been placed upon our paths is uniquely ours. We have complete control over how we interpret, reflect, and process all that information that comes at us. There are so many different ways to see. What we hold on to takes hold of us. So within my daily practice, I try to hold on to hope and spread it around as much as I can. Happiness and hopefulness are two very different things. No one can be happy all of the time, but the alternative to hopeful has serious limitations. I grew up in a time when ch where children were meant to be seen and not heard. We were taught not to question. We were told to keep quiet, and we listened. Politics and religion were on towering pedestals of topics out of reach of, little, of our little hands and inquisitive minds, along with death, <clears throat> grief, suicide, violence, and illness. Then art and nature found me, music, then poetry. Suddenly, a path began to emerge in which to express those hushed away thoughts and shut down the negativity that circled around within my world. Ice cream cone of words. When I was a little girl, I had an ice cream cone of words that I could never finish. 
dripping, dripping, drop by drop, scattered everywhere, a huge puddle beneath where I sat, carried upon the wings and sticky feet of pigeons and mourning doves, my shadow hovered above. As a young girl, my ice cream cone was still top heavy, but I managed, lost some drops, but slurped some up. Somehow a tiny hole would always form in the bottom. My maple, walnut, rocky road words slowly seeped out every time. I struggled to catch the drops on the tip of my tongue before they hit the ground, but that top heavy cone always came crashing, splashing down. Now as an adult, I never get the cone, only the cup. Different flavors each time, and I never miss a drop. What I have discovered is that eyes and ears become finely tuned as a result of not sharing one's words. Thoughts become sharper, ideas larger, and voices stronger. I have a voice. Tattered tongue and wicked wit. I see all this upon my hands, I sit a staunch advocate of the positive, positively motionless, frozen is the mind. Mindful reflections past the ocean of fear, up the mountain of enlightenment. Freed are the words revealing a voice, a voice so deep and broad it can never be contained, nor will it be confined within the dark underbrush of truth or reality. Really, the loudest thing you will ever hear, and oh, so crystal clear. Clarity beyond measure with fog-proof glass. Glassy eyes see through you and miss nothing. Nothing can touch you like a word, such an incomprehensible thought. Thinking, thinking, my brain is shrinking as the words pour off the tip of my tongue, leaving a sweet and sour taste within my mouth. My mouth, my fiercest weapon, my undeniable power, my proof of existence. I exist, and I do have a voice that can and will be heard. All of our voices are worthy of being heard. When we share our stories and our perspectives, our world becomes richer, our communities more aware. Awareness and understanding of those around us creates a kinder, more compassionate, and hopeful environment in which to live. When we decide to vote yes on three, even if we don't know of any transgender individuals but believe that civil rights is for us all, when we decide to vote for a woman because of her merits, her abilities, unbiased about her gender, when we can see the faces of our children within that small Syrian child lying lifeless with waves crashing upon their tiny feet, or a little girl in Haiti, dust covered from the rubble after a massive earthquake. When one can see past melanin, and imagine their loved ones kneeling down breathless, lacking proper care from law enforcement, when we can see that an individual has a heart, a mind, and soul, even though they are differently abled, when we can see that we too are dreamers, whose families came here from elsewhere, and our faces are a whole rainbow of colors. I truly believe that when we can see past all of these things and see ourselves within one another, we become a better version of ourselves. Beautifully complex. I am so much more than that stereotype within your brain's catalog where preconceived resides and the past leaves behind a fog. I am so much more 
than just red, just green, just yellow, just ivory brown, just tan. So much more than just woman or man. You see, I am energy. I am color. I am light, dark globs within palettes, splashes of bright. I am many thickened layers, tertiary colors of paint, neither a demon nor a saint. I am so much more than breast and butt, what lies between the thighs, the chitter, the chatter, the buzzing you hear in hives. I am distressed and sanded, then smoothed, sometimes new colors, always adjusting to new hues. I am open, I am real, I am convex. I am human, reaching out to the world, beautifully complex. We are complex. Life is complex. I have had various hurdles in my life, many hospitalizations as a result of spina bifida and tethered cord syndrome. A doctor once told me that I was going to be in pain and on medication for the rest of my life. <laughs> However, I believed that there were many different paths that one could travel upon, and I had a feeling that there were other options for me. So I searched for the light. Still, Lost within the folds of a linen, white abyss, inside the cracks and peaks of time's halted kiss. Minutes become hours in disguise, hours become days. Are we alive? The lingering scent of alcohol swabs mingled with my cold oatmeal, I found tiny specks of morning light in which my soul could cling to. So the light that I found on that particular occasion was a new doctor. <laughs> a woman with a variety of ideas and a deep understanding of the concept of hope. Sure, I was down for the count, Again, this time from age 25 to 30. But I got my life back with a little support and a lot of positivity. You don't have to be a writer or a visual artist to create change within the world. Um, a little bit of kindness and a positive outlook can go a long way. We never know how impactful a small gesture of kindness can be for someone else. Um, sometimes it can be transformative. If we each move one pebble, one rock, one boulder out of the way, we can and will move Everest. Finding hope. Please don't hope less. Help us hope more. Idealistic, altruistic, I've been called worse things before. The very word hopeful can inspire, motivate, open doors. Hopeless is final. The elevator doesn't go any lower. We've reached the bottom floor. Hope is eagerly waiting with bated breath that the answers and solutions will soon arise. The lack of hope will not let anything living thrive, better yet, survive. Lungs and hearts are crushed by hopeless bricks. Though there are hope-filled hacks and hopeful tricks, there are many cancers that hope has kicked. Hopeless? Never won awards. Never saw what was behind unopened doors. Hopeless 
never found new paths, new roads to follow. For hopeless, there was no tomorrow but hope. Hope will tread a different route, find the light, not block it out, even under layers of wood and dust, slabs of concrete, stand up and walk upon broken feet. This hope, it lives inside us all. Wake up, shake off the dust, break down those walls, preconceived notions, stereotypes, assumptions will only divide. Put it all out there, then nothing can hide or break or crack the earth around us, rumble and shake everything that grounds us, creating a fissure, a rift, a crevasse. For without hope, we are all lost. A hopeless world will swallow us whole, flush all of our dreams right down the bowl. Please don't hope less, help each other hope more. In order to hope more, we must see one another, play, laugh, connect to all those things that uplift us and the very things that speak to our souls and never stop learning. I have learned to adjust, adapt, and find new paths countless times in my life, even through the chaos that finds us in our personal lives and within our world. There is still so much beauty all around us. These things are there for a reason. Within the wind, they fly and sway, reminding us that there is so much more than just destruction and hatred. There is love and there is light. Nature reminds us of these things. I think it's crucial to disconnect every now and then and to plug into the natural world. Awe and delight. The lightest air passed through every strand of her hair. Within her hands, she clasped it. It wouldn't go stale, held it to her nostrils, and deeply inhaled. Suddenly lost within another dimension, microbes and fungi, vines woven to perfection. Warm soil welcomed fingers drawn into warm, then cooled center. Tiny tunnels created paths where new life would enter. She saw all the rocks, their embedded flecks of minerals, House sparrows perching upon green roof finials. Cardinals and blue jays called out to her. She returned their song. They were never gone for very long. For me, nature has been a deep healing force that connects me, grounds me, inspires me, and grows seeds of understanding all around that I pluck carefully and with a deep gratitude for these gifts. They weave their tendrils through my mind and then bloom throughout my creative processes, practices. I always try to share what I've learned along my journey as well as learning from the journeys of others. Within my world, music plants poetry and poetry germinates brightly colored palettes Colors are propagated into the personification of nature, and new fields continue to bloom all around. I am inspired by anything and everything, opening new doors and in constant exploration of dream worlds, social issues, memories, and the tiniest creatures that go unseen find their way into my creative practices. Everything is meant to be seen. Everything is woven together, interconnected. I am. I am the ebb and flow 
of every rolling wave crashing upon your shore, the roar, the rush, the gentle gush of tides that have come before. I am a vibrant blend of ivory tan, red, yellow, orange, green, with many other colors scattered about, some still yet to be seen. I am the voice of many screaming aloud so every word can and will be heard. The tears of birth, the screech of death on the wings of every bird. I am the wind, the trees, the blowing leaves, the song that pops into your head. Then suddenly, when you change your mind, that road you take instead. I am the positive voice echoing and repeating whenever negativity is blocking the path, the tickle, the sigh, the kiss goodbye, the thought before the laugh. I am 10 million oak leaves bursting from their tender buds come spring, the arms that hold and keep you safe, the hand that fits the ring. I am the words to every heartfelt song softly whispered into your ear after the windshield wipers swish and swash the first thing that is clear. I am that perfect puffy cloud high up in the sky allowing sunshine through its rain, the beating, pounding, steady heart that tells you you're alive and holds you close even when there's only pain. What I have learned in life is that pain reminds us that we are still alive. Even within the darkest times um, when we are given a second or third or fourth chance, a glimmer of light can always be found. That light is called hope. Even though there are trials and injustices that envelop our world, beauty and resilience and joy coexist as well. When I discovered exactly what was feeding my soul, I came to the realization that I wasn't sitting at the table by myself. By sharing my stories and experiences, I too was finding connection and sometimes feeding the soul of another. Enough said. When will words be enough? When will they ever be enough? To choke down the years without regurgitating, recycling fears, freed upon the pages, then trapped between the sheets, the binding, reading, rewinding, like a yo-yo caught within an endless loop around the world and back to cradle, ladle, me, some more alphabet soup. The good phrases I chew, then digest, eliminating all the rest. My heart, they will test. For some never dissolve, break down, or compost. Those words latch on, and we are their hosts. They travel through the bloodstream, latch onto a helix of DNA, weaved within pigtails, blurring our vision still today. The letters you and I were never used to spell hate. New expressions can be revived. It's never too late. In your soup, add many Ks, only for kindness. Bring compassion to a rolling boil. Dig to the core. Regenerate our soil. 
the anger injected underground within shaded, withered roots, once exposed to sunlight, will no longer bear tormented fruits. I realized <clears throat> that that voice that was trying to merge all of those years was relevant and does have a place within this world. Our words, our thoughts, our lives all matter. Children's voices, community, humanity, justice, and equality matters. I have come to the conclusion for myself that positivity, hopefulness, and love will lead us to a more peaceful place within and without, as well as honoring one another. I have learned that I have a voice that can and will be heard, and so do you. I like to call myself creatively fluid these days as I enjoy weaving my way through a variety of mediums and traveling down various creative avenues. My art is an all-inclusive exploration of my life blended with the events and the happenings of the world around me. Most of the time when I'm working, you will hear cello music playing. I'm pretty obsessed with the cello. <laughs> I think it's a gorgeous instrument. There are times when there is mus uh, I bounce back and forth between painting and writing, or even uh, writing side by side with woodworking projects. Um, my art began to make sense when I stopped restricting one medium to focus on another and just allowed everything to blend together organically. Storytelling and songwriting have also found their way into my daily practice, and my guitar has even found its way into my acrylic paints. Um, I believe that art is life, and life is art. Mm -hmm.